Vivid colors stream through her paintings, whether they are small still lifes or grand southwestern landscapes. They burst with life, expressing her longing for a deeper understanding of things. In her work, she exuberantly embraces the world. On this edition of Art Now, we'll look at the work of Beth Darling. Hi, welcome to Art Now, a program where we talk to artists whose work is part of our community. I'm Pat Salmon, and I'll be your host. Our guest today is Beth Darling. She attended the Maryland Institute of College of Art in Baltimore and earned a BFA from Tufts University and a four-year studio diploma from the School of the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston. Her paintings have been included in national juried exhibitions at the Boston Art Institute, Massachusetts University, the Institute of Contemporary Art, and the Maryland Institute in Baltimore. And her work has been shown at galleries in Santa Fe, Albuquerque, and Cody, Wyoming. Last year, 40 North chose two of her pieces for the Sky Gallery and for MTD Art. And this past summer, her work was part of a group show at Indigo Gallery. Welcome, Beth. Thanks for allowing us to come into your studio in the Lincoln Building, which is, has just wonderful light and lots of plants everywhere. It's wonderful. You're welcome. I've enjoyed thank you. your series. And oh, I, thank I'm you. I'm thrilled to be part of it. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks so much. Uh, I understand that you came from a family of artists, so art's kind of second nature to you. Um, tell us a little, bit, a little bit about your family. Now, you grew up in a rural area of New Jersey, is mm -hmm. that right? Very pretty countryside mm -hmm. between New York and Philadelphia. Yeah. Uh, along the Delaware River. Mm. Uh, so my father commuted into Manhattan, into New York City, because he worked as an illustrator. Mm -hmm. He was a commercial artist, and he was able to commute by train to mm. the small community in western New Jersey, right on the border of New Jersey yeah. and Pennsylvania. Yeah. And then when I was um, in second grade, my parents bought a country place, a beautiful old farmhouse, a 200-year-old mm. farmhouse oh, with wow. 20 acres. So we were really uh, pretty remote then. Mm -hmm. But he continued, my father continued to commute into Manhattan where he had his uh, studio on Madison Avenue. So you got a little bit of both city and country. <laughs> well, we'd often take trips into the city to visit his studio, which he had for 50 years. Yeah. He, he did a, a illustration for New Yorker, for Collier's, for yeah. um, all those magazines uh, right. after, the, after the war. Yeah. So it was the golden age of, of illustration. He yeah. was a part of that. Yeah. And he was able to raise his family working as a, as a freelance commercial artist. Right, great. Um, now, in 1980, just after you finished art school, you first visited New Mexico, and I think that had a big effect on you and your work. Why don't you talk a little bit about that? Well, uh, I went to art school in Boston, and um, at the end of that period of time, a boyfriend and I uh, took a, a cross-country trip mm -hmm. to, to, uh, to visit the West. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a, he had gotten a grant, a traveling fellowship, so, uh, and I had saved up a lot of money painting barrettes in my studio. So we took a, a road trip, and that's when I first fell in love with uh, Santa Fe. Mm -hmm. First fell in love with New Mexico, with the landscape. Yeah. I had my feet up on the, it, we drove a van that mm -hmm. we had rigged up, you know, to, uh -huh. to, to camp in for several months. Sure. We were going to Mexico to research folk art. Um, ultimately, mm -hmm. and uh, with my feet up on the on the dashboard and my journal open, I was drawing the landscape. What yeah. I loved about New Mexico was the contour of the land, how it's described with the polka dots, mm -hmm. the polka dots mm -hmm. of the pinon pine and the junipers. Yeah, and then you see that you see that, and you'll see that in the paintings when we look at them. Right. Okay. Now your earliest works were still lifes. Uh, in your artist statement, you say that you paint objects that you love. Tell us a little bit about the process you use in observing the objects and composing your works. Well, um, I learned to paint in a foundation painting class. Mm -hmm. And we were instructed to bring, <laughs> on, on painting 101, mm -hmm. a fish, a fruit, a vegetable, a white plate, and a white drape. Okay. And all the 30 students in at Maryland Institute, it was in an old, um, train station, like ah, the one we're looking, looking at out the window. window yeah. It was an old train station from the b &O Railroad that had been converted to art studios. Mm -hmm. And my painting class with Peter Collier, we brought in 
these objects, and 30 or 35 students in the uh, first painting class had 30 to 35 fish from <laughs> Lexington Market in Baltimore. And um, you can imagine at the end of several hours in, in, in Baltimore, which is right. a hot city, right. it's a fragrant. <laughs> Um, but whenever, whenever, um, when my still lives get complicated, whenever I want to return to the basics, I just like to simply observe, um, like the, we'll see later, the, the chili peppers sliced open and just observe directly from observation in, in oils. Right. Okay, uh, let's take a look now at some of your still lives. This first one is a small object still life. Yes, that's because I had a very tiny studio in Jamaica Plain. Uh, it's a part of Boston. Uh, in my apartment, I had a very small studio the size of a bathroom. Yeah. And so I would set up uh, just simple objects to observe, um, not only describing the objects, but the, the negative space around the objects. Right. This next one is a Palm Desert postcard and toy truck. <laughs> yes, and a uh, Harlequin uh, salt shaker, Art Deco, you know, related to the Fiesta Ware. But again, it's a simple object set up in small, shallow, shallow space uh, and describing the relationship among the objects, but with yeah. a thick, juicy paint, very mm -hmm. thick oil paint. Uh, and I paint uh, alla prima, which means all at once. Ah, okay. uh, so you load the brush and you, you lay it in and um, you hope you get it right the first time. Right. Because it's not a lot of uh, fussing and fidgeting. You'd have to right. Right. It's just in the moment. Yeah. Okay, here's a still life with fiesta wear and a Mexican snake lady mask. When I was in New Mexico, I would use a folk art and a colorful, a playful objects. That, again, is the fiesta wear. Mm -hmm. um, I chose it because it's colorful, and those mm -hmm. are tortilla chips. Mm -hmm. And uh, I collect folk art, so that's uh, one of the masks I have. Um, mm -hmm. I always use this tablecloth, too. Okay, uh, here's the varnished frog fiesta. Mm -hmm. Still lives are, are very contrived. To me, they're like little theaters mm -hmm. uh, for me to set up and, yeah. and then paint for several hours. Mm -hmm. uh, so <laughs> those are actual souvenir varnished frogs from Mexico. I have one here in my studio. You can no. see it. Okay. They're um, stuffed frogs okay. that are varnished. And so I made this still life uh, to be a fiesta. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Playful, colorful. And Returning to uh, a direct observation, just a, a study. Mm -hmm. uh, and just simple, but keeping my colors separate and painting it a la prima. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we have uh, some patty pan squashes on a red fiesta wear. It's from a, a Urbana Farmer's Market series. Uh, I would go shopping for colorful vegetables. I particularly like those patty pans because they look mm -hmm. uh, so like tops or toys. Or they do. Flying saucers from the 50s. <laughs> and it's an opportunity for me to, to, to observe yeah. and paint. Okay, uh, the next group of images we're going to see are landscapes. And now you first started painting landscapes while you were on a group trip with painter Jason Berger in Europe. Uh, Here's this one right here is an example of a painting from that trip. It's the Normandy Farmhouse. I had been painting these still lives for many, many years, and I thought I'd wanted to be a realistic painter, mm -hmm. a realist painter, naturalist, well, realist, realism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the trend at the time in Boston in contemporary art was abstract expressionism still. Right. But I, I didn't really care for that because <laughs> I love my objects. Yeah. Um, but my father had always said, you know, Beth, you really should attempt the landscape. And I was very nervous about it because mm -hmm. I had no experience. Right. Uh, aside from the fact that my parents used to go on these painting picnics when I was a child. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I never did that. Mm -hmm. I was very nervous about it. When I was living in an artist's loft in Boston, Cambridge, actually, uh, I heard about a trip to Normandy, France, mm -hmm. with a... Uh, a fine painter from, mm -hmm. uh, who, who, who went to the museum school back in the 40s, but who taught at the, um, another college in, in Boston, named Jay, and he was Jason Berger, and he wanted to provide his students with an opportunity to spend several weeks living in a, in a house in, in Normandy, to have the opportunity to paint every day, not have to worry about getting up and going to a job or making meals. Mm -hmm. So he arranged for uh, six weeks, a little longer than six weeks, uh, five or six of us students, uh, we didn't stay in this house, but we stayed mm. in a villa because it's uh, the coastal town of uh, Ville des Roses mm. between Dieppe and Le Havre. It's 
wonderful. Uh, now, you learned to paint on site instead of working from photos. Uh, what are the advantages of doing it that way? Well, this trip uh, was my first opportunity to paint from life. I'd always been encouraged to, to draw and paint from life. I had never worked from photographs. Mm -hmm. I had seen my father use photographs as, as, a, as a tool for his mm -hmm. materials for when he's doing his illustrations. But um, I was really very nervous, but there were five or six of us, and we all took our uh, French easels, our painting box, mm -hmm. and I, I, have it, I have it right here. Uh, this is the one I took to, took to Normandy. It's very heavy. It was full of oil paints. Mm -hmm. Of course, in those days, you could travel on a plane with cadmium and right. all these uh, lead and all these colors in these tubes, and some of them right. were larger than four ounces. Right. <laughs> Turpentine, linseed oil. I don't think we could take that on the plane. Uh, we were not. able to get that in, yeah. in France. Um, we all went out to a different place uh, with our little suitcases and mm -hmm. materials, and I kept going back to this house. I did so many drawings of this house. I was fascinated by it, mm -hmm. um, did the perspective of it, mm -hmm. and, and I almost became obsessed. And they always knew where I was. It was several blocks away. I had to walk maybe 20 minutes to get there, but they always knew where they could find me. Mm -hmm. Beth's painting her, her um, farmhouse. Right. Okay, now, when you and your husband moved to New Mexico in 1988, uh, they kind of gave you a golden opportunity to paint the landscapes of the Southwest. So we're going to look at some of these now. This first one is Tent Rocks. Tent Rocks was painted on location in acrylic for convenience, because in New Mexico you, you, you often have to hike mm -hmm. to, to get to these, to these places and many of them are very remote mm -hmm. and it's just not practical to bring oil paints because there's no way to clean up. Mm -hmm. So uh, okay. it was suggested or somehow I had learned that you can use acrylics as an underpainting and a way to, to work quickly on location, mm -hmm. get all of the information down uh, with the colors, thin washes, you can clean up with water so it's very convenient. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this one is Ponderosa Rackledge. I should mention about Tent Rocks. It's yeah. a place that they've, uh, it's gone back to its Native American name, Kasha Katue. Oh. And it's, a, it's, it's a fascinating place to, to visit. It's uh, these enormous tent rocks yeah. from um, the explosion of a, of a big volcano uh, five, four, five million, eight million years ago wow. uh, that, that, that dropped uh, this pumice and tuff at thousand feet deep. Yeah. And so those shapes have eroded over, over yeah, a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fascinating place to visit. Yeah. This is a Ponderosa, is a village in the Jemez Mountains, and that's pronounced J E M E Z. I mean, that's spelled J E M E Z. Right. Jemez right. Uh, Mountains, and it was a place where my husband and I would camp. Mm -hmm. uh, we have an old Land Cruiser, oh, an ancient okay. dinosaur of an uh -huh. old Land Cruiser, uh -huh. and um, so we would go on weekend right. and camping trips. Yeah. He would love to cook, and he would look after our daughter if she came along. She, mm -hmm. she was a toddler, and he yeah. would look after her. Because to paint on location, you need at least three or four hours. Yeah, I would think so. Okay, this next one is Devil's, Devil's Throne. Throne. Yeah. This is a, a place I went on my own one day uh, in July, and it snowed. Oh. <laughs> I, was, I was shocked. Um, there's a ghost town near here. I, I never knew this place existed, but I discovered it. It's near Cerritos, New Mexico, okay. on the way to Santa Fe. Anyway, it's a fascinating place. Yeah, it, and it, it looks interesting. I mean, there's just so much texture the, the, in the it, picture. It's, it's, it's a really complicated landscape, and mm -hmm. I, just, I just really loved it. And I, I would um, start several camp canvases on location, because sometimes if it became too complicated, mm -hmm. I, I would set that aside and I'd put on a, a Another yeah. canvas and, and do and try to simplify it, try to yeah. distill yeah. what was important. Yeah, and I think we'll see that as we go along here too. This one is Kiva Epecos Pueblo Room. Uh, this was when I discovered that that old Land Cruiser could go 80 miles an hour. Whoa! <laughs> I, uh, our, our daughter again was like 18 months or two years. She was quite young, mm -hmm. and so I, I put her in the daycare mm -hmm. and I got in the Land Cruiser with all my gear and. Um, Pecos is 25 miles east of Santa Fe. Okay. Santa Fe is an hour away from Albuquerque. So I knew I had to get on the road. Right. That Land Cruiser went 80 miles an hour. <laughs> and I chose to go to um, a national monument to paint because um, New Mexico is very remote and mm -hmm. it's maybe not always safe for um, 
to be alone, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I would feel kind of vulnerable being yeah. by the side of the road. Sure. So if I'm just on my own, I would go to a national park or a, um, mm -hmm. a proper yeah, Indian Pueblo where, where, where you have permission to work or, or public right. land or someplace where. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is Rio Chama Valley 1. This is in the area where a Georgia O'Keeffe painted. Mm. It's a, near Abiquiu. It's between Abiquiu and Española. It's in northern New Mexico. It's about 150 miles from Albuquerque. So this would be um, a camping trip, <laughs> a weekend camping trip. It's near the area called Ghost Branch. that people have heard of. Gorgeous, gorgeous valley. Okay. This is Cochiti Dam 1, and we're going to have two in a moment. You might want to talk about the differences between them. Well, you can see I'm fascinated with pattern, mm -hmm. and I'm also fascinated with understanding the landscape, mm -hmm. understanding the lay of the land, mm -hmm. and so my challenge is to simplify. Right. I'm not trying to create a picture postcard or a calendar edition, right. so I'm trying to understand the structure of the landscape. Mm -hmm. And I was developing a, what you would call a vocabulary of, of seeing, mm -hmm. and it's my language, mm -hmm. and it's also my personality, and mm -hmm. every artist creates, over the course of their lifetime, their own personality. You might call it their style. Mm -hmm. the, other, the other image we're going to see of uh, Cochiti Dam. Mm -hmm. Would you like that? Yes. No? Yeah. Well, this, in New Mexico, <laughs> there's so much sun that colors are very intense. And I can see. <laughs> That's why I need a bright studio. Mm -hmm. I'm used to being able to see everything very yes. clearly. Yes. Uh, but the patterns of the landscape, there are the, the pinon pines or the, the junipers that uh, polka dot mm -hmm. uh, the landscape. Yeah, so it becomes a little bit more abstract. More so. abstract and um, stylized. Yes. Okay. Uh, let's see. This next one is Rio Grande and Pilar. On the Rio Grande, mm -hmm. between Santa Fe and Taos, there are several turnouts where you can people go fishing, and it's a great place to paint because I can be out of sight. Mm -hmm. I can't work if people are uh, talking to me mm -hmm. because I guess I go into a place of concentration where I can't also have language, uh, that kind of language. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see, we have Madrid Road. Madrid Road is how it's yeah. pronounced out there. It's okay. <laughs> My friend Anne Wymore, uh, when she retired from the U of I mm -hmm. as a psychotherapist, mm -hmm. she, she went out to New Mexico and she purchased a, a cabin that's perched um, in the Jemez Valley. And she invited me to come out and paint. Mm -hmm. And um, I did. I stayed in her little studio. This was a tiny one-room cabin that she had. But oh, she wow. put her guests in a little writer's studio, which oh. was like a little birdhouse. We had to climb a ladder and oh, yeah. sleep in a sleeping bag. Oh, but it was a perfect place to paint because from yeah. her deck, I mm -hmm. could look north, mm -hmm. uh, looking towards Los Alamos. Uh -huh. And this is the, the community of Jemez Springs, New Mexico. Fascinating place if you ever have a chance to visit it. Great. Okay. Um, this is a variation on that. This is another painting. When I, when I feel that I'm either getting bogged down or getting precious about what I'm doing, the best mm -hmm. thing to do is just set that aside, start a new one. Mm -hmm. Start a new one. Um, these, these, these are paint, these are camp, um, not camping trips, these are painting trips from Urbana mm -hmm. to go out to New Mexico. It's where I had to buy a second French easel because this was getting ruined on the, by yeah. going in the baggage hold. Right. So I purchased another one. I left it with my friend Anne Wymore. Mm -hmm. And so every year, twice a year, mm -hmm. I would go out there. Mm -hmm. Sometimes she traveled and she'd let me have her cabin. And um, I could paint for seven, you know, ten days. That's great. Okay, uh, this is Irma's Adobe. This is along the Hamas Creek in the Hamas Mountains. Um, it would be a trip that I made from Urbana, so I was mm -hmm. no longer living in New Mexico, mm -hmm. so it was a painting trip. Mm -hmm. Irma's adobe is an old, old adobe made from the, the, the bricks are made from the earth, so that's mm -hmm. why your house blends right in. Right. It's a red, right. so very red, red country. <laughs> yeah. Very red country, and, and when, it, when that creek floods, all the landscape is, is, is coated with this pink. Oh, really? Yes. With this so that even the mud is pink. Yes, even the mud is pink. And after there's been a flood, even the trees and the shrubs are 
coated with this paint. Oh my! <laughs> Irma has to uh, ford the Hamas Creek to get to her to get to her adobe cabin. Oh wow! And if the creek is high, she doesn't get to go home. Wow! She camps in her truck. Wow! She's in her 60s, and she's a remarkable woman. That's wonderful. Okay, this is the confluence of Guadalupe and Hamas. I'm sorry, I'm probably mispronouncing it, rivers. Mm -hmm. yeah. The Guadalupe and the, and the Jemez rivers, it's the confluence of those rivers in northern New Mexico. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a fascinating landscape. And I had to cross the river to get there, and um, I had to pitch my hiking boots. You have to wear hiking boots in New Mexico, so there are rattlesnakes. Oh, yeah. And so I, I pitched so. my hiking boots across and I put on water water shoes, mm -hmm. carry water shoes, mm -hmm. to get my, my backpack, my water. Water is... Uh, eight pounds for a gallon. Yeah. You have to have right. a lot of water. Yeah. My easel, my canvases, because right, I have to paint in a place where people aren't going to come and talk to me. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, and we've been talking about uh, you hiking long distances. Um, now, you had to carry everything you needed for painting, right? And uh, can you just show them again this portable easel? This is and how heavy it is. It's very heavy, especially yeah. when it has oil paints in it because tubes of oil paint are lead and yeah. they're heavy. Yeah. Um, the French easel opens up to, uh, to be a, a painting box and an easel. I've also used that camping, so it makes a nice table. Oh, uh, good. And then uh, the backpack or knapsack and it has, um, has uh, ivory soap for cleaning brushes mm. and this for mixing paints. Right. And oh, you hear a, a bear. Bear bells. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, it's important. <laughs> Some places it's important not to be attacked by bears, so you want to let them yeah. know you're there. Yeah. And my hat. Oh, and also to understand the landscape, it's important to do a to do a very quick sketch. So I have a, a mini mini sketchbook. Okay. And yeah. so before you start on a large canvas, sometimes yeah. just, just to see what's important and mm -hmm. work it out so I have leads and, yeah. uh, and Kleenex <laughs> and my hat. Yeah. You were telling me about uh, one time when you were camping and uh, you arrived someplace at night and then you were surprised oh, yes. when you got up. Yes, I was camping with uh, another artist friend, Sharon yeah. Franz. We, it was a long trip from Albuquerque, several hours to get to north of Taos, mm -hmm. to the confluence, uh, confluence of the Red River and the Rio Grande. Mm -hmm. I had never been there, mm -hmm. and we arrived at night, and it was a drizzling rain. We had to set up our tent and right. you know, make our food and, and go to sleep, uh, excited for the next morning, a right. day of painting. Yeah. And um, what a surprise, because we were, it, 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 it's a gorge, it's a canyon, it's mm -hmm. huge. We were way up high, uh, like at the front of a ship. Yeah. And it was this huge landscape. We've never been there. It's gorgeous, mm -hmm. and we were going to paint all day. What, one thing I noticed early, early in the morning is a, a man and his son took this switchback, tiny, tiny little switchback, mm -hmm. to go fishing. Yeah. To, I was like, they're going to go all the way down. The river was tiny. It was a huge yeah. canyon. Yeah. And uh, until I could no longer see him yeah. carrying his pole, yeah. at the end of the day, that man, yeah. his son, came back. We had painted all day, mm -hmm. four, five, six hours. Yeah. At the end of the day, he came back with his uh, string of fish. Oh, that's great. Trout, <laughs> I imagine. Yeah, that's fine. But, but every, every painting has a story. Yes. Okay, we're going to talk about now some of the paintings you've done uh, since you moved to Champaign-Urbana in 20, 2001. Uh, this next series we're going to look at is, um, rather than the grand landscapes, it's more intimate gardens that are local. And you are also a gardener. So um, this is the first time, I think, that you've said you've worked from photos, although you are familiar with and work, have worked in all these gardens. Yes, or at least they're I, familiar with them. I'm very yeah. familiar with them yeah. um, because I do, I do work in gardens. But these paintings are developed from photographs. Okay. And that was entirely new mm -hmm. for me, something that I would just object to because I really believed in the experience of painting on location and dealing with all of the challenges of that. Right. Plus, relating to the landscape in real time, mm -hmm. not in the comfort of your studio, working from a photograph. And lots of people do that, and, and that's fine. But my friend Bob Chapman said, well, you can't keep taking these trips out to New Mexico. It's just <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's harder and harder to fly, and it's expensive. Yeah. So he said, here you are in, in Illinois. You should be painting the gardens that you work in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like, 
Well, he gave me a bunch of photographs that we had taken. He's a master gardener too. Mm -hmm. And we had gone on the garden walk and he gave me a bunch of enlargements. And he said, just, you've painted enough landscapes, just try to use these photographs of, as a tool to develop mm -hmm. the painting in your studio. Yeah. That's what I've been doing for the yeah. last two years yeah. now. I don't feel that it's cheating anymore because um, I've developed my language, of, mm -hmm. uh, you know, of my vocabulary and the colors, and I understand color and I understand yeah. paint. Yeah. So uh, why not? Sure, absolutely. And these are beautiful. Thank let's, you. Let's go through these. Just uh, this first one. Sure, you can. Okay. Oh, you want me to tell yeah, you? Yeah, if you want to say uh, that's about a, it. that's the garden of uh, Catherine Bach and David Irwin. It's a beautiful garden um, on University. Yeah in Champaign, University Avenue. Okay. And it's a variation of it. It's, again, developed from a photograph of uh, the flagstone path. And this is a Kate, developed from a photograph of Kate Hunter's garden on Oregon okay. in Urbana. Yeah, and actually we've got two or three mm -hmm. versions of this. So um, click yeah. through them and, uh, yeah. and uh, there, there's so many different ways of, uh, of approaching it. I realized mm -hmm. that now, I, now I'm working from a photograph, I'm in my studio. And there's just so many different ways of, it's like a puzzle to... Mm -hmm. And deciding which one is going to be the final one. What colors to use and um, yeah. how to lead the viewer's eye around the canvas. Mm -hmm. How to incorporate the textures and... Um, I'm enjoying it very much. It's great. That's another view of uh, Kate Hunter's garden. But for me, I'm excited by the challenge of the patterns. Mm -hmm. This uh, was from the most recent garden walk, the U of I Extension Master Gardeners Fundraiser. Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, this, was, this was a garden we toured. I'm working on a series of... Uh, paintings of this one. Yeah. Okay. I, that's uh, about it for today. I wish we had more time. <laughs> uh, thanks very much for being with us. My pleasure. Okay. Our guest today has been Beth Darling. Uh, you can see her work at Escobar's Restaurant in downtown Champaign or at her website as shown here. To be, view Beth's work at her studio by appointment, contact her by email at beth underscore darling at hotmail.com. We hope you've enjoyed today's show, and we also hope it will inspire you to explore the local art scene and to make your own art now.